My name is Yuri Lavina from the University of Tsukuba, Japan. Today I will talk about this work entitled MOEAD with Random Partial Fidate Strategy. This work I developed together with Claudio Aranha, Marcel Ladeira, and Philippe Campier. In this work, we explore the population mechanics of multi objective algorithms based on the composition. We explore what is the relationship of this mechanic with the source allocation techniques and priority functions. Here, I show the main research question Is there a positive effect of on updating two sub problems while the order of life can change? Okay. What are multi objective problems? Multi objective problems, also called the MODP, are problems with many objectives or goals. These objectives often conflict with each other. This conflict means that if we improve one objective, we decrease the other objective. One simple example of a multi objective problem is buying a car. Let's take a closer look at it. As always, we want a comfortable car, but comfortable cars have many conveniences and we pay for that. But the comfortable cars tend to be more expensive. On the other hand, if the car is cheap, we might not have those conveniences, and the car is likely not to be comfortable. Multi objective problems are very common problems. However, solving these problems is very hard. To solve these problems, we can use evolutionary algorithms. One popular evolutionary algorithm is the multi objective evolutionary algorithm based on decomposition, the AMOEAD. The MOEAD is an excellent choice for solving multi objective problems. And the most important idea in MOEAD is to decompose the multi objective problem into a set of sub problems. Then, MOEAD solves these sub problems simultaneously. The, goal, the good points of using decomposition are the sub problems are expected to be easier to solve than the original multi objective problem. The subproblem problems measure the quality of solution as a scalar value. This allows the MOEAD to compare different solutions easily. Since the MOEAD now can just compare, measure and compare the scalar value of different solutions to a given subproblem. Here I explain the decomposition step. We have a two objective MOEAP. In this case, MOEAD will create five subproblems, and all subproblems combine F1 with F2. The difference is how they balance these objectives. Let's first take a look at how to create subproblem 1. Subproblem 1 is 0 multiplied by F1 plus 1 multiplied by F2. How about subproblem 2? Subproblem 2 is 0.25 multiplied by F1. Plus 0.75 multiplied by F2. MOEAD creates all other subproblems in a similar way. The original MOEAD gives the same computational force or resources to all subproblems. Here, in this case, our resource is a function evaluation. So the total amount of resources is the maximum number of evaluation MOEAD has when solving a problem. So, instead of how the original MOEG do, why if you treat two problems differently? What if you choose to focus on more on some two problems than others? To solve this issue, we use resource allocation techniques. Imagine that we have 500 evaluations to use with MOEG. Without resource allocation, these two problems get 100 evaluations each. On the other hand, when using resource allocation techniques, each subproblem receives a different amount of evaluation. For example, subproblem 1 gets 200 evaluations, subproblem 2 gets 50, subproblem 3 gets 70, subproblem 4 gets 80, and subproblem 5 gets 100. In total, we still give 500 evaluations to all subproblems, but the distribution is completely different. If 
priority functions are using resource allocation determine preferences between two problems. They help MOED to distribution to distribute evaluations to different two problems over each step of the algorithm. They allow us to design different variants of MOED. Here is an example of how resource allocation works. We have five sub-problems. This means that in MOED we have five solutions, one for each sub-problem. A sub-problem is selected to update its solution if the priority value of this sub-problem is high. Here, the priority, value, the priority values were chosen randomly, but we could choose a metric for that, could use a metric for that. And most of the works on the literature do so. We focus on choosing the right method for short metrics. In this case, in the first generation, solutions 1, 3, and 5 are selected. So we select them here, show in red circles. And then we update their solution. Then we move to the second generation. We do the same, but with new priority values. As you can see, these values change over different generations. Now solutions 1, 4 and 5 are selected, and we change their solution. Looking at work in the context of resource allocation, we saw that all resource allocation techniques limit the number of solutions that the MOED can update at each iteration. I highlight that here we update the problem we should try to change the solution of a subproblem. In this work, I focus on investigating the effect of limiting the number of solutions that can update. For that, I introduce the partial update strategy in MOED. The partial update strategy allows MOED to control the number of solutions that can update at each iteration based on the PS parameter value. This is the algorithm of MOED with the partial update strategy. We name it MOED PS. We highlight in violet the changes we introduce to the algorithm. The most important line is line 10. It is in this line that the PS value is used to decide if a subproblem receives resources. As you can see, in the same line, the partial update strategy compares the UI for each subproblem based on a random value. The UI is a vector with the PS value for all subproblems, which is set on line 8. So, any impact on the performance of MAD is related only to updating different problems and only that. How many two problems should we try to update? To answer this question, I carry out the experiment on the PS parameter value. I tested six different uh, PS values. That is, PS equals 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. When using PS equals 0 0.2 to 1, it is the same as the traditional MOED, because in this case the MOED PS tries to update all the problems as a traditional algorithm. Low values of PS indicate a low number of subproblems to update. High values of PS indicate a high number of subproblems to update. We evaluate these six parameter values in the US and the DPLZ benchmark. Common benchmark in the literature, using the hypervolume and, and the IDD metrics, which are standard metrics in the literature. In the study, we set the maximum number of evaluations to 30,000 evaluations. This figure shows that that shows the regression lines of performance of different PS values. On the x-axis, we have the PS parameter value, the small values on the left. On the y-axis, we have the hypervolume value. High values are better and shown on top. Each line represents a multi-objective problem. And the results are that lower values of PS lead to better performance. Since the, the line is higher on the left side of the image, this means that we have better hypervolume values when the PS parameter is set to small numbers. 
this holds true for all molecules that get clobbered. We only show the half volume results because the ICD results show the same trend. This figure shows the in time performance of MOED with the part of today's strategy. This, uh, this figure shows the results of hypervolume over the evaluation. These evaluations are shown on the x axis. The result of MOED is that if PS equals to 0.1 are on top, with a pink color. The blue line just below refers to PS, PS equals to 2. 0.2. We can see that as we increase the PS value, the results get worse. This suggests that if MOED updates only to sub problems, the results are better. In summary, we show that small PS values are associated with any time performance improvement in MOED. Again, we only show the hypervolume results because the IDD results indicate the same performance. But how does MOED, with our partial predate strategy, behave in comparison to the original MOED and MOED, MOED with our eyes, the most commonly used in software location techniques? I compare these three MOED variants using the same benchmark, the same methods, and the same maximum number of evaluations as before. Here, I only bring the hypervolume results of, on the US benchmark because these results represent well the behavior of the two variants. Better results are highlighted in both. The result of the MOED with the partial update strategy, MOED PS, are much better when compared to the other methods. In summary, this study shows that MOED with the new partial update strategy results in better performance as we reduce the number of subproblems that MOED updates at each iteration. This is especially true when the PS parameter value is equal to 0.1. This suggests that MOED benefits from a slower population than ever. To end my presentation, I show some open questions related to this work. We show that MOED improves the performance of, of uh, we show that MOED PS improves the performance of the MOED, and we understand that this is related to slowing the search progress. This is because the number of, of solutions that take part in the update step is small. Thus, this improvement in the algorithm performance relates to increasing in selective pressure. This, uh, we are trying to, to answer this question now. Another important question is what is the best parameter value? We have some indication that the best value is a, ve is a very small one. However, would MOEDPS benefit from using values at different stages or different values at different stages of the search? Thank you very much for your attention. For your information, for more information about me, please check the QR code on the left. For accessing the GitHub repository to the code, it's on the QR code on the right. Again, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any more questions, you can ask me or look at the paper. Thank you very much.